the senior. He's been unselfish throughout his four years at BC, a modest scorer, outstanding defender, and a chance to give his team a three-point lead with 38.3 remaining. He nails it. And the first thought process is, hey, I'm down three points right now with the ball. I need a three. Get it down the floor and go right at the basket and attack. Try to get a two as quickly as you can. Esparza with 25 to shoot. 26 seconds on the game clock. Pacific down by three. Here's Gray. Whips it inside. White. The layup goes down. A terrific cut by White. A better delivery by Gray. And now that's the smart play by Gray. Right up. Now you stretch this thing out. 19.8 seconds left. A couple of fractions of a second go off the clock. Well designed defensively just then. Pacific and company are thinking at the defensive end. A good strong cut though by White. We touched on the fact that he is one of these unheralded guys. He plays big in big games and comes up with productive plays. And right there, not many bigger this season. On a senior-oriented team, Pacific found the freshman, Tyrese Rice, 76% shooter. One and one, and he nails the first free throw. Two-point lead for the Eagles. 19.8 remaining. He looked like a seasoned freshman on that one. A prolific high school score. And he knocks down a pair. You can still look for a quick delivery to the basket. You have plenty of time. You don't want to panic and force a long shot up. And Gray slips for a moment. Kept the dribble alive, though. That's legal. 12 seconds left. Moriker for the tie. Got him! Oh, you don't need it, but it works when you get it. Gray is just delivering the goods. Such a huge play, Ian, that he did not catch the ball as he fell to the floor just then kept his delivery and dribble alive. We are all tied up. Final seconds in Salt Lake coming up. 65-65, the number four seed in the Minneapolis bracket, Boston College, and the number 13 seed, Pacific, with 9.1 left on the clock, Boston College ball. Well, a couple of things you think about. BC with those three timeouts have the luxury of trying to get the ball and advance it up the floor. If they get it up the half court or beyond in, say, three or four seconds, you might see them call a timeout. But if I'm Pacific, more importantly, what I want to do right now is that I got to control the tempo defensively. Don't make any clear, stupid mistakes defensively and allow an open shot, but come at them and be aggressive. Now, BC, on the other hand, very important to remember. The worst thing that should happen to BC right now is an overtime game. There is no doubt what time of year it is. <laughs> and it's fabulous. Here we go. Seven seconds, Smith across. Five seconds, Smith Whoa. above. He traveled. Great job by Gray again. Offensively, Gray doing the work. Defensively, he got in the way. A little help by his teammates to get the big guy. And that's exactly what you don't want if you're BC, a big guy handling the ball. Let's see if Pacific, who doesn't have a timeout here, let's see if they get the ball to a guard to create. One other thing, too, when you catch the ball right now, Ian, you have about two, maybe three dribbles if you're going towards your basket to get a shot off. 3.9 left. Pacific looking for the win. Get it in for Webb. Two seconds, one second. Tight defense from BC. Great job by Dudley just then to step in. I don't know if he's going to get the call. I like the fact that Dudley was thinking catch and timeout. He may get a fraction put on this clock, but it was a terrific setup defensively by Dudley to step up and make a stance defensively. And that is the question now, whether there was time left on the clock when Dudley had possession and took the timeout. That's what the officials will look for right now. Yeah, there are a couple of times, obviously, at the end of the games, this is a no-brainer that they could go. Now, let's see when he gets possession. There's the ball, possession. Uh, you know, it, it's... Two tenths? Two tenths, maybe. And then, by the way, you can't get a shot off, keep in mind, at two tenths of a second. The ball comes in, you got to glide the ball or tap the ball towards the basket. Let's see now, the ball's going to kick back a little bit. Dudley's number three right here. And watch the ball is going to go back first. Now he calls timeout. Mm. And when does the official, he calls it, but when does the official recognize it? I don't know if he's going to get, if he gets two tenths, it's a lot. He's not getting more than two tenths, I don't think. 
Uh, that's what it's going to be. Two tenths of a second put on the clock. So we are tied at 65. Point two now on the clock. Mike Sanzer explaining it to Bob Thomason. Pacific thinking, hey, we're, we're going to overtime here. What, what are you talking about? Two tenths of a second. Selfishly, I'm glad they're talking about it so we can take a breath. This has been some start. A look back with Boston College. They had a chance to win it in regulation, and Smith called for the walk. And just as I said, Dudley down one end defensively. As far as defensively stepping in to make life difficult for Smith. So BC in a situation you cannot catch it. This is a. You have to guide the ball oh. or a tap scenario near the rim. Dudley will toss it in. Two tenths on the clock before overtime. And it throws it up. We are headed to overtime. First game of the day in Salt Lake. A white knuckler tied at 65. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. First game of the day here at the Huntsman Center. Winner here will move on to take on the winner of Nevada and Montana, the 5-12 matchup. Christian Moriker. A three-pointer to tie it. BC had a chance to win it. Smith called on the turnover. Then Pacific with a chance to get out of here with a victory. Unable to get a shot off. Yeah, Morica with a huge, huge shot. And, you know, we have to give him credit also for his free throw shooting. Hit those three yep. straight. I mean, down the stretch in gray. Just marvelous execution at the offensive end. And most impressive to me was the patience they showed for a team that was kind of like in trouble clock situation and scoreboard wise. Boston College has won its last eight overtime games, including one this season against NC State. And they try to win it with the way they play normally. Rice pulls the trigger. Can't hit the three. Uh-oh, the men are going after the boards now. Dudley and Moriker tie up. Pacific takes over with a possession error. And I think BC might be thinking, why is our freshman taking the first shot rather than getting the ball down to our experienced guys in the blocks? If not the shot, at least look down there and get it to them once. If they have to kick it out, then you shoot it in rhythm. Well, Rice is now 0 for 6 from the field, 0 for 5 from three-point range. Here's Brown putting it on the floor. Moriker against Williams. Left hand, no. Not a good decision there. I know he can make that shot, but I think you have to challenge more. This is Overtime is about challenging people. That's why I didn't like the outside long shot by Rice and a little flip shot by Morica down that end. You're going to win this, you got to win this inside and drive it to the basket and earn it and get to the line. Moriker with 30 points and seven rebounds. His career high is 34. There's Hennett looking. Smith unable to get position down low. Nine to shoot. Hennett gives it up. Dudley on a pump. Didn't want to shoot it. Yeah. Rice driving. I think your point is well taken just then, partner. Who wants to shoot the ball? These guys are supposed to be experienced players. Al Skinner's team. A little tentative right there. Three seconds remain on the shot clock. And BC retains possession. In it, looking to get it in cleanly. He does outside. Smith, a three. And it rims out. Dudley pokes it outside. Oh, they got numbers here. There's Webb running. Pull up on the way. Count it. That's a three. Once again, usually not your first choice, but he recognized quickly, Webb did, that it was Craig Smith, the big guy, and as a small guy's mindset is coming down the floor, it's either, A, I'm going to go by you, but if you don't come out and recognize me, I'm quick enough, even though I'm smaller, to get my shot off from long range. Webb has really picked up his scoring over the last month. Was it a three-pointer? Good question. And this is what the officials will go look at. They will go look and see that that right foot, to my eye, was on the line. Let's take a look at the low angle. Sometimes it's difficult to see it. Oh. Wow. The first one looked like he came to the line. The second one looked like he didn't. That's why we're sitting over here and <laughs> fans voice of their opinion. Take Let's another take look. look. I'm getting old, Diane. Help me with the eyes. Now, well, Webb, doesn't that? That's uh, look, tight, but I, I can't say definitively. definitively. Yeah, right. You've got shadows. You've got the toe. And this angle here, 
albeit it's a great look from a camera perspective, the low angle to me makes it even more difficult to see where the line and the toe are. Now that's what the officials are dealing with right now <laughs> on the other side. And not that it's really that important. No. Huh? <laughs> Mike Webb nailing one from what we believe is long range. <laughs> that is safe to say. It's long. It's close. Uh, I'm not so sure that's conclusive either. Nope. It's great three shots, but boy, the difficulty. I got I it as a three, Jimmy. Okay. That's, that's what I would go with. On that first one, my first reaction was that right foot slid close to the line. If I'm keeping consistent, I would go that that was a two, but boy. You know, just a quick sidebar, too. You know, people in sports, they look at the officiating, they, they comment, because somebody's not going to like this call. Nope. But these officials in, in sports now are playing, these games are being played so quickly, and it's only a matter of inches that make the difference of these calls that it's amazing how quickly they can come to an agreement, but how, how often they do get the calls right. Jimmy, on another topic, what does this stoppage do for these players? You've just been battling for 40 minutes. You finally get into overtime, everything on the line, and now we've got a three, three and a half minute stoppage right now. I think two things come into play right there. Number one is we take another look at it there. Hard for me to really be definitive as to whether it's on the line or not. Number two, I think the fact of, regardless of whether it's a two or three, Pacific is now waiting this thing out with a little bit of lead, so mentally it's gonna help them. If they get the extra point, it'll give them a real big lift, and it is a three. So they get a bigger lift out of this, they get a little bit more momentum, and, and the slowdown for BC works on them a little mental, mentally on a negative sense. Mike Sanzer just put his arms in the air, indicating a three-pointer. Pacific, 68-65 lead. We come up on three minutes to go in OT. Brought back memories of Patrick Sparks, yeah. Kentucky. <laughs> that was a great game, too. And that one counted for three. Rice. Right. 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 You see the big fake right there. Nice decision, but not a good one there. Oh. Dudley oh. trying to get it back. Spars are again. Tip ball. Webb, another. He's got it. Oh. Oh, baby, what an action play by a Spars. And now one end to keep a mistake alive. And Webb is just out of sight shooting the basketball from long range. 71 65 Pacific. To back trays, Mike Webb. And this building has responded. California, Mike Webb with back to back three pointers to give Pacific a 71 65 lead on Boston College. 2.46 to play in overtime. The Eagles last year. A second round loss to Wisconsin, Milwaukee, a number 12 seed. This year facing a 13 seed. BC was not happy with their placement, a number four seed here in Utah. And I, if you're an experienced BC team, what do you do? You come out and go to your strengths, and that's exactly what they just did to Smith. Al Skinner's team should be through these, these battles. We've seen the fact that they've won in overtime games, so it's nothing new to them. Now's the time to test some adversity, but go to your strength. The senior at the line. Free throw shooting has been a problem. 66% this season. They need them both. Short. He is now two of six from the line. 22 points, 11 rebounds for Smith. One of the best players in Boston College basketball history. They need one right here just to get a little positive thought process going. And he hits. It allows them to come up a little bit more full court right now. It's a five-point game. Pressure. Gray needs help. They got to hurry right now. Nice job by Hinnett again. He stepped out of bounds, I believe, before the timeout. He did. Yep. Out along the sideline, and Pacific turns it over. The pressure pays off for BC. Hinnett, second play right there stepping across forced that out of bounds 
Watch the step across, and now Webb's looking for a timeout, but he real doesn't realize that his left foot slides against the out-of-bounds on the sidelines. Huge turnover with 2.17 to go in overtime. Plenty of time for Boston College, though, to execute, but they have to get into a little quicker rhythm. Hannett takes matters into his own hands with a three. Now they back in, now the shift. Now they have the defensively. Keep an eye on Williams, 51. He's long, he's quick. He's forcing lateral passes in the backcourt. BC's first field goal since the 2 11 mark of regulation. Under two minutes to go in overtime. Pacific up by two. Here's Gray on the drive. Floater. No good. Williams couldn't grab it. Out of bounds, and Pacific will hold on to it. Uh, a tough shot along the baseline. Maybe not a great shot either in terms of where you are situationally in this game. 1.43 remaining. Pacific up by two. Esparza, way outside, deflected. Rice couldn't grab it. Now we've seen Pacific play well when it was a little scattered with web jump shots, getting it going a little quicker. Now in the half court sets, they have to be patient, but really have to attack and try to make something happen. You see outside right there, Gray like saying, come on guys, get into something. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Gray. Down to a minute, 18 left in overtime. 10 to shoot. Watched by Hinnett. Yeah, I'll be surprised if he lets him go right by him again. Gray lets it fly. Count it! If, All three! If you remember in the first half, the end of the first half was the same type of play. Hinnett allowed him to go by him, and he ended up with a foul. He didn't want to let him go by him. Great decision by Gray to pull up. Back to a five-point lead for the Tigers. Under a minute to go. Dudley oh. answers <laughs> with a tray. These guys are stepping up here early on. 74-72 Pacific. 47 seconds left in overtime. Esparza handles the pressure. A 16-second differential, so BC has the luxury right now. Playing with a sense of urgency defensively, but do not need the foul. And right now, I'm not a big fan of waiting this thing down to seven seconds or so, and that looks like what they're going to do. Esparza holds nine to shoot. Pacific up by two. Esparza makes his move. Outside White, short, 18 seconds left. BC with a chance to tie or take the lead. Freshman running the point, Al Skinner wants to talk things over. Good call by Al Skinner to talk things over. Down two with 12 and change left. What a battle this has been. Two point game in Salt Lake. A terrific start in Salt Lake City and a better finish for Pacific coming down the stretch. As Morica hits one shot from long range, then they come back to back with Webb going deep. Gray deep again. This team is playing with poise and confidence down the stretch. And I'll tell you, it's been fun, it's been fast. And I thought there were a couple of times, especially about the 10 minute mark in regulation, as you touched on, it looked like Pacific was almost ready to go down. BC was trying to knock them out and they hung around and forced this thing into overtime. And BC has to go right at this basket quickly right now. Here we go, one possession game, 12 seconds left in overtime. BC trails by two. Hinnick, six seconds left. Smith gets it, Smith turns, Smith. Foul call with 4.3 remaining. You know, it's interesting to me, not a bad foul because his free throw shooting hasn't been great. So you know what, the thought process, okay, if, if they're going to earn it, let them get to the line with Craig Smith who has been struggling from the line. He is three of seven from the strike here today. Biggest free throws of his four-year career. Down by a deuce. Smith on target. <laughs> now, I know it's a simple thing, but everybody on the line, Bob Thomas is yelling down to his team. Lockout. You heard it in the CYO leagues when you were five, six, fifth grade, sixth grade. Get the rebound. BC trails by one for the tie. Smith. Oh. He drains it. Boy, is that ever clutch for a senior to step up. Three seconds left. Gray with a chance to win it underneath. Time expires. Oh. Oh, how did White ever get open down there? We are going oh. to a second overtime in Salt Lake. <laughs> I think he came from the bleachers. 74-74. <laughs> Double overtime. First round action. Hey. <laughs>
double <laughs> overtime with BC and Pacific all tied up at 74 and 74. You're on, you're on your own. You have the last three by yourself. <laughs> well, coming up, go to the final four here on CBS. Alabama and Marquette in San Diego, the Oakland Regional. They'll finally get that one started. Winthrop, Tennessee, South Alabama, Florida, and Montana against Nevada here in Salt Lake City. I call me sentimental, Ian, but you know what? Craig Smith at the free throw line with his career, he has to make those two shots. If you're a basketball fan in general, you don't want to see a career end with a guy missing one out of two and costing his team a game. And guess what? It's over time again. BC controls it. Rice oh. up top. No doubt. On the alley-oop feed to Sean Williams. Where did that come from? Al Skinner is where that came from. Nice call from the coaching staff. If we get the ball, let's go right to the tin with it. Nice finish. BC leads by two. Gray defended by Rice. There's Moriker. He has poured in 30. Long three. And it's rebounded by Smith. That's a shot he can hit, and not a bad shot with your first possession because it was a clean look. 76 74 Eagles. Just about a minute gone by in overtime. Hit it for Rice. Working the perimeter. The cut, Dudley, and tipped home. Was it on the cylinder? It yeah, was. It looked like it was. Looked like Williams, who's very active, both defensively and the offensive glass, doesn't like the call. Now keep in mind, though, there's an imaginary cylinder that goes above the rim. Mm -hmm. So if the ball is even above the rim, and it's on that imaginary cylinder, the basket still will not count. So basket is waved off. BC's lead is two. Gray is going to take the three. And rebounded by Webb. Good kick out by Webb also. Moriker, open look. Short. And a timeout taken as Hinnett was able to control it along the baseline. 76-74, Boston College has possession when we come back. In leadership, no word is more important than trust. You can trust Chevy, the brand more Americans choose. See why during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. Like Silverado Halfton Crew Cab with more interior room than Ford F-150 Super Crew. Get a 2006 Chevy Silverado Halfton Crew Cab LS two-wheel drive starting at $22,990 after cash back. Or get it for less during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. See your local Chevy dealer. Sometimes just getting to retirement seems impossible. That's where we come in. As the nation's 401k leader, the principal offers many simple ways to plan for retirement, making it easier for you to get where you're going. The Principal Financial Group will give you an edge. BC up by two. Here was the call made underneath on the offensive goaltender. Now keep in mind, I the imaginary cylinder goes straight up right now. I know, and everybody else does, and you do, that the ball is not going to go in. It's going to go off. But when does he touch it? When the imaginary cylinder comes into play, just because the ball is going to miss, you can't assume that it's going to miss. I think the officials got that one correctly. LBC's got the two-point lead and the ball with 3.38 remaining in double overtime. Extended minutes for Tyrese Rice, the freshman. They break the trap. And now settle into a half-court set. Hinnett. Dudley. 16 to shoot. Spread it around. Rice, that's a three. He hits. Hey, a little cautious in that first overtime, but now all of a sudden stepping up. The Greg Gumbel in New York will keep track of this game for you. But meanwhile, those of you scheduled to see action in Jacksonville, South Alabama will face Florida. We will take you to Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, and Stephen Bardo after this word from your local station. Everybody's watching March Madness only on CBS. Right now, coming down the floor, a huge possession for them to get a good look. Down to 249 remaining in double OT. And another steal. It is falling apart for Pacific. They can pull this one out. Nice decision right there with the lead. Play the clock a little bit right now. Don't go into a stall, but play it smart. Nice little run over the last five minutes for BC. 
two and a half to go. Rice calls out of play. There's Smith hit the two clutch free throws to ensure a second overtime for Boston College. Doesn't take the shot, six to shoot. Shot clock winding down. Now Smith, little bump, spin, no good. Moriker clears it. We get off for something quick here once again. Not a panic shot. Still plenty of time. Two minutes to go in double overtime. Webb's had the hot hand. And the rebound to Williams of BC. Right, Williams goes up a little higher than most people, doesn't he? <laughs> At six foot <laughs> ten, and he's got the hops. He's got some springs. And a foul called on Gray. This cold, it ends up this. Set it up. First one right here. Rice gives it up unselfishly. Hit it, and now the big time finish. Wow. Perfectly done. Look at him come right down the middle of the gut right there and finish it off. Yeah, that's getting upstairs. Tyrese Rice at the free throw line. Double bonus. And Rice makes the free throw. Asks every turn. Both teams had chances to put an end to this one and avoid overtime or a double overtime. Neither team could cash in. And two out of two for little. Team South Alabama against third seeded Florida. The winner will advance to take on the 11 seed Wisconsin Milwaukee who defeated Oklahoma earlier today. There you see the starting lineups and threes will reign supreme here in Jacksonville, better than 14,000 on hand here at the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Tim Brando along with Stephen Bardo, Mike Kaminsky, happy to have you. Timmy Higgins, John Hughes, and Zelton Steed, our officials. John Pelfrey, who coached for eight years as an assistant to Billy Donovan, gets his South Alabama. No Pacific is going to come at you with the double teams. You're going you're to put the pressure on you. And Rice running the show pretty nicely. 13 to shoot. More important to take the clock down than it is to get a good shot on this one possession. Under a minute to go now and double overtime. Dudley pump fake fading away. Count it! And that's a dagger. Foul called and Dudley's going to the free throw line. Boston College can taste it. And the beauty of this is if you're Al Skinner is that you've had a bunch of guys chipping in down the stretch into the first and now into the second overtime. So collectively, BC really showing some stamina and guts. Esparza has fouled out. Stephon Johnson, the freshman, comes in. Ten rebounds for Esparza to go along with those three points. And emotional as he leaves the floor. Jared Dudley at the line for Boston College. Shooting one. Dudley can bring the BC lead to 10 with 53.9 left on the clock. It's good. And Dudley, big numbers for him. 23 points, five assists. Final 45 seconds. Gray to the rim. Rejected by Williams. You do not emphasize not bring it in there weakly against Williams with the way he can block shots. And that's your exclamation point here in the second overtime. Foul called with 29.3. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Christian Moriker, 30 points for Pacific. Craig Smith. 25 points, 13 rebounds, and a couple of big free throws in recognition of their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best, Chevy, and American Revolution. Rice of the free throw line. Just keeps making plays for BC. And for Craig Smith, the BC wins it, 88 to 76 over Pacific. So the Eagles move on to the second round. They'll wait the winner of the Nevada Montana game coming up here in Salt Lake. For Jim Spinarco, this is Ian Eagle. So long from the Huntsman Center.
BC, a winner in double OT. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on our 25th road to the Final Four. Greg Gumbel coming up after this. All right, so Boston College is a winner in double overtime. In the Minneapolis bracket, the Eagles advance over a tough Pacific Tigers team, 88-76. Meanwhile, in action right now in the Washington, D.C. bracket, Tennessee with an early four-point lead on the 15th seed Eagles from Winthrop. Also in action now in the Minneapolis bracket, South Alabama and Florida just getting underway in the first half of that game. Two other games still to tip. Alabama and Marquette tip time out in San Diego will be at 3.50 Eastern time. Montana and Nevada will tip in the Minneapolis bracket out in Salt Lake City in about 30 minutes, coming up at about 3.55. That is action still to come your way here on CBS after this word from your local station.